Hello everyone, AZ Flyer here. And in this video, we're gonna go through the steps to set up basic stabilization and self-leveling with an FR Sky SR10 Plus stabilized receiver. So we're just gonna work with a regular airplane like the set 15 that just has regular ailerons and elevators and just basic stabilization. And um, I think you'll find this helpful. So let's go ahead and go through the steps on how to set it up. Okay, let's start by setting up a new model. So we're gonna, at the model screen, we're gonna press the plus sign. It's gonna bring us to our uh, type of aircraft. We're gonna set up a regular airplane. So we're gonna call it airplane. Next, uh, engine, one channel. Uh, ailerons, we're just gonna do one channel here. Gonna keep it simple because we wanna wire them into one channel in the receiver. We're gonna say one channel for flaps, and we're gonna have a traditional tail on this airplane, and then our elevator. One channel, we're gonna Y the elevator into one channel, and we're gonna have one channel for our rudder. And then our name, we're just gonna keep it simple here. We're gonna call it F-15, just for simplicity's sake, and no picture for now. And then we have our basic airplane ready to go. So now when we go over to our mixer screen on our airplane, we're gonna see we have our Five channels there, ailerons, elevators, throttle, rudders, and flap. Uh, we will do gear later if you want to, uh, but this is all we need for stabilization. So then we're gonna go ahead and, and connect up a receiver so that we have something to work with. Okay, the next thing to do is to bind up a receiver and I've got a SR10 Plus Archer Plus receiver here, and I'm just using a little portable battery to give it power. I like doing this uh, outboard of the airplane at first so I can do all the calibration without having to do it inside the airplane. So I recommend getting the receiver all set up, uh, bound and calibrated and everything before you put it in the aircraft. So that's why I have this battery and it just makes it a lot easier to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our main menu and to the RF system tile. Uh, make sure our state is on. Our type is access, and we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna register this receiver. Let's go ahead and tap register, and we're gonna hold the registration button down while we give the receiver power. So just holding it down, making sure my polarity is right. Give the receiver power. There's my register light came on, and the registration is okay. Next thing to do is to bind it. So we're gonna unpower the receiver, and we're gonna put this in these RX1 line. So we're gonna, all we do is tap bind and then give the receiver power. Do not hold the button down this time. Just give it power after you tap bind. So we got bind waiting for receiver. We're gonna find a port here and give the receiver power. And the bind should happen, SR10 plus, there we go. Ready for receiver, bind, okay, we are bound up, ready to go. From here, we're going to calibrate the receiver. So to do that, we're gonna go out to our main menu and over to the gear down at the, bo the bottom right here, that's the system menu. And we're gonna scroll over to SRX calibration. And we're gonna follow the steps here on the screen while we have power to the receiver. Tap on SRX calibration and you'll see it, it just has some simple steps to follow. So you'll see there's an illustration here telling you which direction to point the receiver. And when the receiver's in that direction, under power, you just click okay and it's ready to go. And this calibrates it uh, so that the receiver uh, and the transmitter know what orientation the receiver is in. So on its back, pins to the right, we're gonna click enter. Uh, upside down, pins to the right, click enter. Standing on its back, pins upright, click enter. Pins down, facing you, click enter. On its side, facing right. And on its side, facing left. And that's it, calibration finished. Okay, we have the receiver in the aircraft and it's under aircraft battery power now. So we're gonna make sure everything's working okay. Now something very important about uh, stabilization here. If we've got um, control services going backwards, don't worry about that now. We're gonna do that after we do our stabilization. So just completely forget about your control services being back backwards for now. So you'll see if I go left on my aileron, you notice I'm getting the wrong direction on my aileron. It's wanting to roll right, even though I go left. 
Uh, so it's backwards. Same thing with the elevator. The elevator is going down when I pull back. Um, so it's backwards, but we're not gonna worry about it right now. We're gonna go ahead and do the stabilization first, and then we'll fix any throws that need fixed after the stabilization. So stabilization takes priority over the control services going uh, the correct uh, direction for right now. Before we set up our stabilization, we need to do a couple things in our receiver to make sure it controls the aircraft. And that's gonna be a gyro gain and an on-off switch. We are also gonna be operating in quick mode, which is I, I call simple mode. This way, our on-off and self-level is on one switch and we don't have to worry about it. So it's very simple just putting it on one switch. So I rec recommend quick mode, especially when you're new to this, just to get it simple and set up and ready to go. So we're gonna to go to our mixer screen and we're gonna add a mix for our gyro gain. And that's gonna go on channel 13. So we're gonna hit a free mix. We're gonna send it to the last position. We're gonna call this gyro gain. And we're gonna put it on this knob right here, S2. S2 is gonna be our gyro gain. Or you can put it on any knob you want, but. Um, I'm choosing gyro or gain, uh, that, that knob there for gyro gain. And then we're going to come down to the bottom. We're going to send that to output 13. So just scroll down to output 13. 13 uh, is assigned to the gain in this radio. So uh, quick mode, uh, this receiver, this radio, gyro, uh, channel 13 is your gyro gain. Uh, now, something to think about, you've got um, a curve here going to negative 100 and 100. We need to fix that so that when I turn my knob all the way to the left, that goes to zero, not negative 100. So we're going to come down here, we're going to do our offset, and we're going to turn that offset up to um, 100% so that our, our zero now is, or all the way to the left is zero and then all the way to the right is 100%. So that way we have the full range of motion there on our knob. Then we're gonna create a mix for the gyro on off and self level. So we're gonna hit the, the plus sign again, free mix, last position. Uh, we're gonna call this gyro. And our source, I'm gonna put it right here on this switch. It's a three position switch, so it's ready to go. And so now you'll see my cursor moving from right to left. And I can call, call I can put call outs on this also so that when my gyro's off, it says stabilization off, stabilization on, and self-level. So I know what it's doing. I don't have to actually, um, I love the call outs when I'm in the air. So you can put call outs on that switch as well. And we're gonna come down here and put this on channel 14. So again, in quick mode, channel 14 does your on off in your self level. The next thing we need to do is set up our stabilization so that all of the settings are right and then we'll test it, make sure everything's working. So we're, to do that, we're going to go to the system menu, which is the gear at the bottom right. And we're gonna scroll all the way out and we're gonna see SRX stable. We're gonna tap on that and that opens up our stabilization menu. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up and that arms everything here and so First thing we want to, do, want to do is make sure that our stabilization is on. And then we're going to look down below here at some, some percentage settings. Now, you may find these in various stages of, of set. For your initial setup and, and for the basic stabilization and self-level, you want uh, these five to be at 100% for, for setup and testing. You can change them later. And everything else at zero. So all the ones down below, the, the, uh, the hover, the knife offset, um, things like that, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna want all that down uh, at zero. Uh, just set your aileron, elevator, rudder, aileron auto 1v1 and elevator auto 1v1 gain to 100%. That's, this will help us to get it set up and test that everything's working. There's also a second page which runs channels seven through 10. If you click on the, the button down to the bottom left in the middle, it'll take you to page two. And you'll see here that uh, this has other um, settings. If you're just working on a simple airplane like that, you wanna make sure this stabilization is turned off because you're not gonna be wanting to stabilize the landing gear and the flaps and things like that. So the first page goes channels one through six, of course, not counting the, the throttle, of course. 
And then the second page is seven through 10. So since we're not gonna be using that, we'll turn that off. If you have a lot of channels, you're using all those channels your receiver, then you can turn this on and do stabilization here. But for our purposes, we're gonna turn that off because we don't want the stabilization messing with the gear or the flaps. Okay, before we get started on our stabilization, we're gonna do a self check. What this does is this allows the stabilizer to find the endpoints for all of the control surfaces. So it's good to do a self check before you get started just to make sure that the airplane knows or the radio knows the limits of all the throws. So to do that, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click on self check enable. And we're gonna see the light turn blue on the receiver. And as soon as it starts to blink, then we're gonna do all the limits with the throttle down, do the rudder, do the limits for all of the control surfaces. You know, you would have seen it moving. And when the light turns blue, it does a self-check and now it knows all the limits and self-checks complete. Now we're ready to check and see that my stabilization throws and corrections are going in the right direction. Now remember, our actual controls are running backwards. That's okay, don't worry about it. The stabilization overrides that first. So let's make sure our stabilization is correcting in the right direction. Then when we're done, we'll go back out to our output menu and change it so that my actual control throws are working correctly. Let's do the stabilization first. So I put the on off and the self level on this switch here. So with the switch all the way forward, it turns the self level on. So let's pick up the plane and see if it's correcting in the right direction. So if I pick it up and roll it to the left, you'll see the ailerons are trying to push it back to the right. So that is working in the right direction. If I go this way, it's trying to correct to the left. If I go this way, it's trying to correct to the right. So the aileron correction is working correctly. Again, that's with the self level turned on so I can see what it's doing. Let's check the elevator now. If I push the airplane down, I should be getting up elevator and I am. So that's, that's correcting in the right direction. If I pull the airplane up, I'm getting down elevator, so that is correcting in the right direction as well. So I know that my gyro stabilization is working correctly. I just have to go back in and change my control throws so that my control throws are working in the right direction. So I've got that, the knife, the um, auto level, the self-leveling is working correctly. Now, if you get it to a situation where your stabilization is going in the opposite direction, in other words, if you bank left and it's trying to roll it left, you need to reverse that, then from your stable menu here, you're just gonna go and you're gonna find whatever's backwards and reverse it. So for instance here, if the ailerons aren't going in the right direction from a stabilization standpoint, you reverse it here. Not the control throw, but the stabilization throw. So if, if I, when I do my stabilization, if it's, if it's not working the right direction, I can reverse the stabilization here in the main menu, main menu of the stable menu just by switching it here, aileron, elevator, or rudder. So this is how I'd change my stabilization direction, and then we'll go out and we'll show how to actually change the throw direction on the control horn, uh, control surface like normal. What I also like to do while I've got the airplane here is go ahead and go to the, turn it off self level to the middle, which is gyro on, and see if there's any chatter when I pick it up and move it around. You'll hear, see I'm getting chatter. I'm not getting auto level, I'm getting correction for gyro stabilization. So I am getting, chatter so the gyro is working and if i turn it to off i should get nothing now which i am i'm getting nothing so if for any reason those are not working in that direction if you want to change the direction you can reverse uh the switch setting in your mixer um but you know this default seems to be straightforward for auto level middle for gyro on and all the way down for gyro off the other thing we can test is our gain. So I'll turn the gain all the way down with the gyro on. So if I, I should be getting chatter here with the gyro on, getting chatter. And if I can just move the airplane around to make sure I'm getting chatter, if I turn it all the way up, my chatter should get more intense. And as I turn the gain down, my chatter goes away as I approach zero on my knob. So you'll see as I come to zero here, I'm not getting any chatter. And as I turn it up, I get a little bit of chatter. And the more I turn it up, the more chatter I get. So I know that the gain knob is working. 
Again, if you want to mess with the throw on that, say you want the center to be zero, then you can just go to your, your offset and your weights and adjust your knob accordingly. But that's gonna give you gain um, control on your gyro. So, and if you feel like you need more or less, when adjust it, all you need to do is go into your, your menu here on your stabilization and you can turn these gains up or down from 100%. So again, we right now we've got them set at 100. Those can go all the way to 200, which is, which is really, really crazy. And the last thing we'll wanna do is we wanna correct our throws. So as we said, our ailerons and our elevators seem to be going backwards. Stabilization's correct, but our control throws are backwards. So we're gonna go out to our main menu, go to our airplane, outputs, and we're going to reverse this. So right now on our roll left, the airplane wants to roll right. So I'm gonna tap on aileron and invert it. Now when I roll left, my ailerons go left. When I roll right, my ailerons go right. Elevators backwards, so I'm gonna come out, go to elevator, and I'm gonna invert that. So now when I go pull up, the airplane goes up. When I push forward, the airplane goes down, left, right, up, down. How's my rudder? Rudder's good, left and right. And one last thing we'll want to do before we close it out is make sure since we did those reverse throws on the ailerons and elevators that everything is still working correctly on the stabilization. So with the auto level switch on, I'm gonna go ahead and check and make sure that everything's working in the right direction. If I roll the airplane left, it's wanting to push back to the right, so that's good. If I roll the airplane right, it's wanting to push back to the left, so that's good. If I go down, the elevators are pushing me up. If I go up, the elevators are pushing me down. That's great. And of course, you always also wanna check your rudder. You can't do that in auto level, but when you're in your stabilization, just make sure your rudder is pushing the right direction as well. And that's it for basic stabilization with ailerons, elevators, and rudder. And if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. I'll be glad to answer what I can. I wish you good luck and safe flying. Thanks for watching.